Owen Davies, Al Fresco tonight with a side order of Saucy Tongue, we hope. Your first season on Forever Night, you mm -hmm. were pretty well known as Marathon Man. Was it the same thing again, second season? Uh, up until, let's say, episode 42, let's say. And then, then I was, uh, I, I, I think I stamped my foot for the first time in 42 shows and said, come on, guys, give me a break. And then they indeed, they helped me out uh, for the last six shows. Super. And, uh, and I'll tell you, with the... Uh, with a, just an extra day off every few shows, boy, it makes a huge difference. And you had to, you had to fight for that. Um, no, or you had basically, to I just had to, no, no, I, I just basically had to say that I meant it, that I wasn't just moaning and whinging just for my own, you know, I was doing it for the show kind of thing. A lot of people uh, see acting as a very glamorous and privileged profession. When you tell us things like you just tell us, how correct are we? Can, can we be enlightened on this? What's glamorous about acting? Uh, it's, well, if you love doing it, it's, I don't know about glamour, but it's truly one of the, uh, the chosen professions. If you can enjoy what you do and be enthusiastic about it, I don't think there's anything better than it. I mean, the fact that you're, you're normally shooting in old abandoned studios, well, they're not studios, they're factories that have been, ours is, I believe, an old printing house. Uh, you know, they're not that old uh, MGM, you know, the studios, the commissary and all that stuff that you, that you remember from the old studio days, but it's, it's not, not glamorous, but it's exciting. Uh, given the acting burden that you have on this show, yet you still leapt right into directing. Now that's that's even more work. Or is it a matter of a change is as good as a rest? That's exactly it. And do you know what it does? Is it, it focuses more uh, me more on the acting, and it uh, allows my appreciation to grow for what everybody else does on the show. I get more knowledge, indeed, as to what everybody else does on the show. And it, after a couple of years, you need something to re energize yourself in the show so it's the best thing that could have happened and i love it yeah, actually we were talking to john cassar the other night and he mentioned yes that um he and you spoke quite a bit about directing yeah oh john when in the first season i sort of helped john get to his first job and john's out there saying great things about me so, I, so it's a mutual support society yeah it's hand washing how nice mm. um is this also like another string to your bow is it just something else you can do within the realm of the entertainment yeah, business sure. it's another it's a natural progression i think i think you have to explore all of the avenues um, and it's coming up to 20 years that I've been doing this, so it's, uh, it's time. I've done it in the theater, and it's time to do it on television. It was a matter of being quite reticent about all the technical aspects. And once I, I basically threw myself into the fray, I thought, hey, this didn't work out too badly. And the guys helped me a lot in the sense that they supported me, uh, but they didn't let me. I mean, the whole thing was, if we do it all for him, what's, what's, the, what's the point? But if we don't, if we don't help him, then he's going to go, ah! the abyss so it worked out really well i'm quite proud of the first couple of shows i did it was another step you've taken do you see yourself going on beyond perhaps into producing and, and even beyond that well in yeah i think actually there's something that i'm involved right now in trying to get a project from the very very inception of the idea to hopefully filming it uh over in uh, britain in a couple of years so yeah so I I, given, given your schedule of forever night you must have a, a timetable that's a little more flexible on that one Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, there's there's absolutely very I mean it is uh what it is, it's in development, let's say that. Which could mean <laughs> that it'll never happen or hopefully it will. Super stuff. Um when you're directing, there must be an advantage when you're on your own set. I mean you know the other actors. Yeah. Um there it must be if not easy, at least more facile to work with these people. Oh well I mean you've got Precy, you've got you've got uh basically a shorthand uh and that, you know <laughs> what happened on our show because uh, unfortunately things are changing but the six people who were the unit as a cast in the first couple of years uh would do anything for each other so i mean if you looked at them <laughs> begging going help me or or someone kathy for example kathy might ask there was a problem with the script that that uh the the writers hadn't want to change and uh so we we'd, we'd work with it and then kath would look at it and say i can't do this with you today please all right, fine. We're, so you got rid of a lot of stuff that uh, otherwise you'd have to prove yourself as a new guy coming on the show. We just knew, and it, it was great. I don't know what it would be like to honestly be on. Well, that was what I was going to ask yeah. next. If you went elsewhere, well, I mean, scarier I, thing. But well, I don't. And yes, I'd say yes. But having said that, I w it wouldn't be that bad because I've been on so many different sets over the last whack of years that I've seen that some are happier than others. As long as you don't go in trying to bully people and as long as you're asking for people's encouragement in a, in a, in a secure way. I mean, you don't go in and say, I don't know what I'm doing, otherwise why would anyone listen to you? But you don't, I don't think you, bullying is, is my style. Anyway. 
Yeah, I've heard that there's several kinds of directors. Some are screamers. How, how does how does that get resolved? Well, I, I mean, it's not not for me. I, I'm the hall monitor on our show, and the people aren't allowed to do that. <laughs> that's that's when I get sort of tough, and that's when I put on my Clint Eastwood hat. Um, control on a set. Um, people once again assume because actors' names are up there first in the credits that they're the people who have the control. But that's not necessarily true, is it? Oh, depends on which actor we're talking about, is it? <laughs> um, how do you mean control? Do you mean um, who sets the want, tone? If, if you want to change a, a piece of, of writing, if you want to change a, a venue, a, a costume, uh, oh, if you no. have... Uh, the, I th well, we've, our boss is Jim Parriott, and that's right. all there is. Jim is, uh, he's the guy I answer to. He's the only guy I talk to. Um, uh, recently, what with it, it going on the USA Network, there's some great people down there that I spent the last couple of weeks vlogging the show, actually, with. And uh, John Feldheimer at TriStar, Columbia, is a big supporter of the show, and, and he's great. Uh, Paragon has, has uh, it's, it, it doesn't uh, get in the fray too much. Nobody does except for Jim. Jim really is the guy. So, yes, no, the boss of the floor, although Jim's not here a lot. Right, this is what I wondered. Where does the... But his... his uh, Where does the story come from? He's got his lieutenants, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm one of them. Nick Gray, who's our producer, is definitely uh, one of them. Nick's... Nick's one of the great guys that there is. And, of course, the director. But then the art department is so strong. Jacques Burdett is, uh, you know, he's there, and he's, he knows what, he answers to Jim, and Jim sends out, uh, okay, this is what your, your, your expertise, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. The ADs have their thing to keep the show moving. You know, I'm there as host. <laughs> um, Forever Night this season is running into some major revamping. Um, a lot of... Good word. <laughs> we wanted to slide it in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, characters departing, and mm. therefore the actors are departing, about 50% of the cast. Exactly. Can you tell us any of the new characters and the actors who might be playing? I'll tell you what the characters are. I, I'm not at liberty, I don't think yet, just because of contractual things, right. to say who the people are who are going to be playing them. Uh, First of all, is it a three-for-three three swap? There's three going out, or there's three new ones coming yes. in? Yes. Yeah. Um, Natsuko Ohama, who was playing the police captain mm -hmm. this year, that seems to be the, the role of death, if anybody wanted to... Oh, long, don't take the job. Career, you know, don't take the job. Know, <laughs> Gary, the first year, Natsuko, the second year. This year, it's uh, a man again, mm -hmm. and somewhat more similar to the Gary kind of flavor than Natsuko. Uh, she was such a dream to be around. I mean, she was great. Uh, it is, I can tell you, a very, very nice man and a very good actor who's coming into the role, so that's, that's a plus. Uh, Deborah Duchesne um, is leaving. I'm uh, trying now, to convince I, I'm Deb trying to, to back, I'm trying to think now that that's not necessarily a bad thing for you. From what I understand, she's punched more holes in your tongue than a piece of Swiss cheese, so <laughs> I don't see that this is really a bad thing for you. Uh, but you've got to understand how, having gotten the tongue there in the first place, it's not the worst <laughs> thing that could ever happen. Um, Deb's gone. Uh, that's too bad. Uh, but the person who's sort of replacing her function is a young man, a young stud vampire, dark, broody, hopefully lots of, you know... For the ladies. Yes. One for the ladies. Oh, yeah. Um, that, and he will take over the, not so much the function, it won't be running the raven or anything like that, but that function, you know, that kind of character that you always have in a show that has to answer questions, he right. will be a vampire. Yeah. And, of course, the biggest one is John Kapalos. John's not coming back. Uh, oh, his own reasons, by the way. It's not uh, any, any dreadful story, I think. But uh, he's chosen not to. And the person who's going to fulfill the, the role of partner for Nick is going to be a young 20-something woman. So I, You can I, see if, where this one's going, yeah. Well, no, either it'll be Babe Watch or, uh, which we're not sure. Batwatch. Uh, yeah, Vampirella or whatever. Uh, I'm uh, not, not sure about that. Uh, Depends on the script. I would really, really enjoy the, the humor, somebody with humor. But if it, is, if it is an attractive lady, at least that's, that's going to bring in something else. However, I'm really concerned with the idea of the show shifting too far away from where it is. Not that you shouldn't do changes. Of course you should. Not that you shouldn't explore new characters. Of course you should. But the fact that you don't lose the essence as to why the show has gone 48 shows and is continuing to do at least 22 more. Probably more than that. But uh, if, well, no, maybe not any more than that if they, the mix doesn't work. Because one of the greatest things about performing is what you get from somebody else. And I can promise you John Kapalos is one of those dreams that comes along, as were, were Natsuko and Deb. I mean, John particularly, only because I worked with him so much. I just adored him.
I mean, I, how actually we filmed this show is beyond me, because if you normally <laughs> you're shooting there at three o'clock in the morning, and Capolos comes on, and that's me done for the night. Everyone's and, got the giggle. Yeah, and if he sees me, that's him done for the <laughs> night. So we, uh, how you get it through is beyond me. But. Uh, the other thing to worry about with, with so many changes is um, you have a very strong fan following there, quite an organized bunch. Now, with other shows who have tried major uh, changes, yeah. the fan reaction has not always I been know. positive. I know. This is, and this show, uh, as much as any other show, is really, really de I don't, dependent, well, certainly to somewhat dependent on the fan support. It really is. Not that any show isn't. But this one was kept from dying a couple of times just through the, the, the energy of the, of the fans. So I th just, I, it's, not, it's not a fait accompli that it's worse or anything now, but it's something to be addressed, I think, as we go along this year. Are the scripts prepared yet? Have any scripts no. been prepared yet? No, and I, heck, I'm directing the first two, and I haven't ah, seen there's one. a confidence booster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. I figure if, I, if I'm this confident without even having seen the story, I think, oh, well. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons I, I'm doing it is so that, because I have, I'm bringing the, the 48 before onto, you know, onto the screen, so hopefully we don't sag too much. And also, I actually asked when they, they said, would you like to do it? I said, oh, yeah. Because if we're having new characters, first of all, I'd like to welcome them onto the show, and that would be the best way I could know how to do it. Uh, well, every success with your new season. We hope oh, to see you on set and meet some of the new actors who will be there. Yeah, well, I think I mean uh, they'll enjoy doing it for you guys, and I hope uh, hope the show continues. Yeah, we always have a ton of fun. Thanks very much for speaking. Okay, thanks, Susan. Okay, I shouldn't be talking about this. You should be talking about this. Garrett Wynn Davies. Um, good interview. Sunny afternoon.